or that I'm capable of. That's the solution. 26. Let us not become boastful challenging one another, envying one another. Is that good news? Yes. Is it so simple that Jesus is ins insulting our intelligences? That's what the expression crucifying the flesh is talking about, folks. Verse 25 uses a very interesting word. If we live by the Spirit, the word live or life has two meanings in the New Testament. As it's being used here, it's speaking of the Greek word zoes, zoes, or zestos, as it's being used in verse 25. Zestos is where we get the word zestful. Fervent, hot. That's the word that Jesus uses in Revelation 3. Verses 15 and 16. You're neither hot nor cold. I feel like vomiting you out of my mouth because you're lukewarm. The word for our life, our sinful nature, in Greek is bios. And what is it speaking of? 1 John 2.16. We're going to close with this. We would like to read 1 John 2.16. He's going to spell it out for you. 1 John 2.16. Volunteer? Okay, Regina. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not the fall of the this of the world. The pride of what? The father. The pride of what? Life. life. There is the other use of the word life in the New Testament. Bios. Speaking of what I'm like what? Biology. Two different words in the Bible, or usages or meanings for the word life. It's spelled the same way, but 180 degrees difference in meaning. That's why from time to time it's important for us to look up words in our concordance so we know what it's talking about. So one is speaking of the what? The zest, the hot, fervent, Holy Spirit working in us. Isn't that what we want? If we don't experience it, Jesus is going to vomit us out of his mouth. We're not going to where you hope to go to. Because what? You choose to be living under the influence of the what? The bios. Pride of life. Isn't it nice that Jesus gives us a choice? And he even gives us a recipe of how to experience it. Why? Because he did it already. How? By turning every decision, experience, and temptation over to his heavenly father. Do you and I have that choice? Yes, we do. And as you and I first make the decision to live that way, is Jesus patient with us as we learn to walk in the Spirit instead of in the flesh? That's the good news. Some generation is going to have to make that decision and make that choice. Or Jesus will not be able to return. Jesus' second coming has nothing to do with earthquakes, tornadoes. Okay? It has nothing to do with terrorism. It has nothing to do with the economy. It has nothing to do with the corrupt movies coming out of Hollywood. Not because I say so, but because the Bible says so. Until God has a people that have allowed him to see them on the foreheads, symbolic of what? They have turned self over to Christ. Christ cannot take over because he's a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on us. So does that mean that I need to take the initiative to do something according to Scripture? No. Jesus is the one that takes the initiative. He's in heaven. And what does He do? He comes and He does what? Through the Holy Spirit. Knocking on the door of my heart. How's that for taking the initiative? You and I have a choice of what? Opening the door or saying, no, I'm not ready for that stuff. Let's pray.
Loving Father, we thank you for the clearness of your word. We pray that our hearts will respond to your knocking on the door of our hearts so that you can enter and produce in us the evidence that the world needs to see that it's possible to live the life that you live. And in so doing, vindicate the great law of love. I pray that that will be the experience and the choice that each one of us make right now. We ask these requests and thank you for answering them in Jesus' name.